Hey guys, what's going on? So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how you can actually use Jupyter Notebooks directly on your iPad. Now the trick here is you're going to be doing this through VS Code. So in one of my last videos, which I'll link up below, I actually showed you how you can go ahead and install VS Code on your iPad. Once you do that, let's go ahead and log in and I'll show you how to get Jupyter Notebooks set up. Okay, so once you do that, you're going to be greeted obviously by this Jupyter screen. I'm just going to X out those errors, we don't really, we're not too concerned with it. So it's really easy. You're just going to go into the actual market and you're going to search for Jupyter. Once you do that, you'll see this first one. I've already got it installed. You're just going to go ahead and install it. Okay, once you've done it, you can close this out. Now do remember from the last video that I did walk you through this, this is running on a remote server sitting on a Raspberry Pi. You can easily have this running off a of DigitalOcean or any other kind of Linux server that you want. But let's go ahead and start an actual notebook. So I'm just going to hit shift command P and I'm going to go to create a new blank notebook. Once that's done, it's going to go ahead and connect to the kernel for this specific Python version. And once that's done, you're ready to go. You pretty much have Jupyter on the go. And I'm going to take this first spin. I'm going to put some code in here to show you how this works and how simple it is. So very much just like using any other Jupyter interface, you're greeted with a very similar interface where you can go ahead and enter your code here and add different code lines as we go down this. So as you can see, it says Jupyter Server Local. It's running on my actual Raspberry Pi as, this, as shown down here on the bottom left. And I'm running Python 3.6.9. I also have a later version installed as well, 3.8, but I haven't put Jupyter on this right now. So let's just go with this version for now. Okay, so the service we're gonna use today is something called Alpha Vantage. And what Alpha Vantage allows you to do is it allows you to go and look and analyze stock information. But for the purpose of today and for keeping it easy, all I want to do is understand in the next three months which companies are going to be going IPO. To do that, Alpha Vantage has a very, very simple query. So we're just going to head over to Alpha Vantage. And so Alpha Vantage, here it is, the website. You can go ahead and get a free API key, which we're going to do in a second. But essentially, what I'm going to be doing is going down here, and these are all the different functions you can pull from. And the one that I'm most interested in for today's demonstration is going to be around the IPO calendar. And so with the IPO calendar, it's going to basically you have to add in a couple of parameters. One is going to be the function, which we'll define, and then the second is the API key, which I'll pass both of them as parameters. Once you've done that and you're going to pull this information, it's going to put it in a CSV format. We're going to have to do a little bit of wrangling with it, which I'll show you. But if it's just a general JSON-based um, endpoint, it's a lot easier. But given this is uh, a CSV uh, endpoint, we're going to be doing a little bit of manipulation to it, but it's not going to be hard at all. So first, let's go ahead and get an API key. I'm just going to go here and put student or educator or anything you want. And honestly, you can put anything you want here, but um, I'll just say company ABC. And there are limitations to the free one. Uh, there is a paid version as well that you can go ahead and download as well. And I'll just say test at abc.com. I'm not a robot. Let's get my API key and there it is. So you're just going to go and grab this API key. So let me just go ahead and do that right there. And we'll go back into VS Code and I'll just store it here for now. And we'll come back to that in a second. So we're going to go ahead and get our libraries. And the one thing I really like about VS Code, especially here, is you could go and install your libraries by doing this, you know, pip, install, whatever it is. But I like the fact that you can have it in your command line right down here and just install it if you need it. So I've already got pandas installed. So we're just going to go import pandas as pd. We're also going to need requests. And finally, I'm going to need string IO as well. And this is for the fact that I'm getting this as a CSV file and I need to do some conversions to it so that it'll actually work in my endpoint. String IO. And that's, those are basically the three dependencies I need to get this to work. So now I'm going to go ahead and add my API URL. Which is Fairly straightforward again, it's just HTTPS. All right, now let's go ahead and create our parameters. So we'll just say params is equal to, and it's going to be API key. And the API key is this right here. So we're just gonna go, actually I already have that in my clipboard it looks like. So just like that, so I can get rid of this one now, I don't need it. And then the second parameter I'm going to need to pass is the function as we talked about. And the function was the IPO calendar all in caps. And finally, we just need to run our request. So R is equal to requests dot get. We'll say API underscore URL. 
and then params equals params. Okay, now let me just, oh, I probably spelled something wrong here, so let's go back here. And it's right here. I didn't spell query properly. Q-U-E-R-Y. That should fix it. And then the second one is right there. It's alpha vanish.co. All right, now we're good. So when I run this, it gives me a response 200, which means that I am getting back something from that endpoint. So that's perfect. Now we want to move this into a data frame. And this is where we're going to be using string and .io. So df is equal to pd.read underscore csv. And then we're going to do string io and then r.text. Okay, now that I've done this, let's go ahead and see what data that I get back. So I actually get back all this data around. These are the companies that are actually going to be going IPO in the next couple of months. So most of these are in the next couple of days, really, if you think about it. Um, but now I see some that actually have zeros and some that have numbers here. And I only really care about the ones that actually are non-zero. So in order to do that, it's very simple. I would just say df because I'm searching within this data frame. And this is the title that I care about. Basically, I want to know all the all the um, organizations that have a price greater than zero, uh, price high greater than zero, I should say. And once you do that, there you go. So you get your subset. So basically, this is just a very quick demo to show you the, how you can actually use Jupyter Notebooks on your iPad, because I'm running this 100% off my iPad right now. And although it is into a back end like a, like a Raspberry Pi, um, like I said, you can have this on DigitalOcean, you can have it on whatever, and it's very, very lightweight, um, doesn't take up a lot of resources. So it's a great way to actually be coding and learning and doing your data science work on the go. So if you guys like this video, please consider liking and subscribing, and I will see you next time. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.